Hey folks, hey, welcome to my YouTube channel, Roland Martin here, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite lures. It's a, it's a way to trick out the one of the finest topwater plugs in the world. This is the old time devil source. I have nothing to do with the company. I get no endorsement from the company. I just like to use the lure. So let me just tell you what I do to make it a more effective lure and to fish it the right way and catch some really quality fish. Well, first of all, let's talk about the lure itself. Let's talk about the fact that, uh, that I've come in and I've changed the hooks. I have this wide gap EWG number four hook. Well, actually, yeah, these are number four uh, EWG Gamma Guts. These are a light wire hook. I'm only using 20 pound line, so I don't need a real thick, heavy hook. I don't need like the biggest saltwater hook in the world because the 20 pound line, I mean, that's, that's, that's enough. And I find that this hook's just enough. Okay, now, I do a couple other things to this plug. First of all, uh, if you notice where these hooks have been rubbing back and forth around the body of the plug, you notice there's a, it's scra scraped the paint away. Well, moisture can get, get in through there and it can, it can make this plug heavier because it just absorbs water that way. So what I do, I come in with polyurethane, just a little spray thing of polyurethane, and I'll spray that area just real lightly. I'll just spray it right around the, where those hook uh, marks are. And that seals the wood. That seals it so, so it's not going to absorb a lot of water. It's not going to get all heavy. Okay? okay, that's the first thing I do. Okay, now we've done the hooks and we've done the spray paint. And what about the props? Now look at that prop. It's all bent. Look at that. It's, it's, bent. it's bent crazy. It's bent. The props have to be bent with a little bit of an angle to the rear. For example, it, when you hit stuff, I'm going to bend it the right way and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. That prop, that prop is bent just about right. It's a little bit of a little bit of an angle to the rear. Okay. Look at, look at this front prop. It's almost straight, but I'm going to bend it a little bit this way and a little bit this way, just a little bit. Okay, now, the other thing that I've done is I've taken a pair of pliers, I've taken a pair of pliers and I've taken this hook eye, this, this screw eye out, okay? And it just unscrews, it just unscrews. And I've put it a larger, a larger hook eye. And in addition to that, I've taken super glue and I'll super glue that hook in place. It's a really good idea, if I can find my super glue. I always carry super glue, it's actually crazy glue. And I'll take a little drop of this crazy glue and I'll put it on the shaft of that, of that uh, <clears throat> shaft of, of the screw eye in both the front and the rear. Now, it, it keeps the fish from tearing loose. I mean, sometimes a really big fish could just, just absolutely tear loose and uh, and, and, and tear your plug apart. Now the same thing happens with these little screw eyes here. If you notice, these little, these little screws on the bottom, they're kind of small. These are little bitty screws right there. There and there and there and there. Again, I'll take a little bit of super glue and I'll dab just the tad amount of super glue uh, on that spot. Okay. Now, okay, you have to understand what I'm doing with the devil's horse. I'm working it so slow, and I know you've seen several of my videos and how I do this. I basically come up to a spot with it and I throw it into little open pockets. It's, it's a target lure. It's an ambush point lure. It's a, for a spawning bass lure. It's, it's for overhanging bushes and trees, for example. It's for little pockets in the, in the grass where I can just let it sit there. I don't move it very much. I move it very slowly, and I don't cover much water with it. I only cover a couple feet, and then I, I reel, it, reel it back in. So what I'm trying to do with this plug is when it lands in the water and I pull it, I just want the blade to, when I pull it, I just want the blade not even to make any noise. It doesn't make any brrr, brrr, like it will do if you pull it real fast. It'll go brrr, brrr, and that's what everybody thinks it should do. Well, in the spawning season, that doesn't work. In the spawning season, there are little holes in the grass anyhow, and you, you run out of room and just, so you let it sit there a long, long time and you just barely move it very, very slowly. And the big fish just suck it down. Just the other day, I caught a nine, a nine pound bass on this plug. 
and it just it hit like a little bluegill. It just it just it just came up and just just sucked it down because it's right over the bed. And they see it, the profile is just there, it's just intimidating. And so in spawning season, you want to work it real slow and easy. So okay, that's the first thing. Okay, we got that figured out. Now let's let's talk about tackle because I'm telling you this tackle is a big deal. I use a favorite rod and reel, and I got a, a big contract with favorite rods and reels. I've helped design favorite rods and reels. I've I've helped field test all their favorite rods and reels. I really like the, the company, and I really like uh, uh, all the work that I do for them. And uh, we make improvements on, on tackle constantly. And so what I like in a reel is I like this. Uh, and this happens to be the uh, the the eight to one reel. Yeah, this is no. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, this is the eight to one. 8 to 1 ratio solace reel. This is the SXCS series. The XCS is the top of the line reel of favorite, okay? 8 to 1 ratio. It doesn't really make any difference. You could use a 7.3 to 1. You could use a 6.4 to 1. Oh, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. But I like the 8 to 1 because it, I don't reel this plug very far. What I do when I throw it out, I'll throw it out and I'll just, uh, I'll just reel it in real quickly and, uh, after I've worked it just a couple feet. Okay, okay, that's the, the reel. What about the rod? This happens to be a seven foot, kind of a light action uh, rod. It's, it's, it's not their big expensive rod. This is what they call the white bird. In fact, it's, a, it's the least expensive of all the rods they have. And it's a less than $100. I think it's, uh, I think it's, I don't know, 60 or $70. It's, it's not an expensive rod. But I like the action, it's kind of soft. And so for top water action, I don't want a real stiff heavy rod. I want a light action rod. I want like a medium action rod. A six and a half medium action would be good. A six, a seven foot medium action would be good. I don't like medium heavy, not for a caught top order. I like a medium action rod. I can work it better. Okay. Now, let's just, let me just show you just one way of tying the lure on. Okay. Some people would say, why do I use a uh, line? Well, what kind of line do I use? Well, here I'm using let me explain what I'm using. I'm using 20 pound test monofilament. Why do I use monofilament? Everybody thinks about braid and everybody thinks about fluorocarbon. There's two problems. You have to use more, uh, monofilament, by the way, for top water. I'll tell you why. There's a propeller on the front of that bait. There's a propeller. And if you tried to use braid, if you tried to throw this plug with braid, it would, that braid, when it would slack, it would, pull, it would get hung around the propeller every single cast. Not just some of the time, but just all of the time. Because the braid would come back on itself, it's real limp, and, and so as it goes forward, it gets back here, and then it starts forward again. The blade's gonna turn and wrap it around the shank of that, of that propeller every single time. You can't use braid. Braid is out with a propeller on the front of the lure. Now, if you didn't have a propeller on the front of the lure, that would be a different story. This devil horse has a propeller on the front of the lure, you can't use brake. Okay, the second thing you can't do is you can't use fluorocarbon. Let me explain fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon has a specific gravity heavier than monofilament. Monofilament slinks, sinks real slowly. It's almost neutral buoyancy. It's almost the same weight as water. Fluorocarbon's heavier, higher specific gravity. It sinks a lot. So if you're working it slow, like I like to work it. Now, if I was working it real fast, you could probably use uh, fluorocarbon because you kind of hold your rod up and it would kind of come along. But if you're going it slow, like I'm telling you to fish it, I'm throwing it out there, let it sit there. Now the line is in the water and if it's fluorocarbon, which is, you don't want it to be fluorocarbon, it's gonna sink, it's gonna sink, it's gonna sink. And it's gonna be hanging down below the plug like this and coming up like this. And when I pull it, it's gonna pull the plug under the water. It's going to pull the plug down because all oh, this line is sunk down in the water like this because I'm working it real slow. So you can't use fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is out. Okay. So I'm using monofilament. Mon monofilament has less memory. Uh, monofilament's easier to cast than, uh, than fluorocarbon anyhow. And I like 20, you know, you could get by with lighter line. You could get by with 14 or 17. But let me explain 20, why I like 20. 20 on this front plug does this. Most of the time, if I tie a Palomar knot, and I'm coming through double, Palomar is just the perfect knot for this, but you got to make a big wide loop on it because the whole plug has to go through this, this loop. So you make a great big loop 
like this. Great big one. Take the plug and go all the way through this loop like that. And pull it tight. And what you got is a properly tied Palomar. Pull the tag in, look like this. Okay, now, here's why I use 20 pound line and not lighter line. I'm cleared off. Now, <clears throat> why I use 20 pound line is for this simple reason. When I pull that thing out straight, now pull it, see how it's not, it's not leaning back, it's, it, it's kind of staying, it's going straight out the front of the plug. It's going out straight out the front of the plug, and, and therefore what happens is it, 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 the water pressure can bend it under, and sometimes it'll get caught under the propeller, but most of the time, 20 pound is, is stiff enough where it sticks out from the plug. And when it does stick out like that, it, uh, it, it just a whole different ball game. It doesn't get tangled on the prop. Now I'm gonna show you one better knot. This is kind of a little complicated, but if you wanna catch really big fish, and I'm talking about coming to Florida and you're talking about 20 pound uh, bags of bass and you're talking about 10 pound bass and you're talking about giant fish, let me just show you the deal. Everybody says, well, I'm an old saltwater fisherman. And I like to tie a bimini twist knot. Now there's a one reason for that. Not only is it 100% knot, but it's a leader that sticks out from the, from the propeller of that devil source and it never, ever, ever gets wrapped around the propeller. Now let me just show you what I do. This is something that you need to do. There's a couple different double knots, double lines that you can use, but the, what I like is the bimini twist. And I take, take about a foot of line like this and I go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Okay, twenty-one turns. I'm taking this loop and I'll put it over my shoe. It's hard to see, but or I could put it right here. Just so you can see it. Put it right there, and when I do, I'll come right right forward and I'll uh I'll pull this forward, okay? Now, you didn't see me do that, but what I did, I, I let the line go back over itself, and what it did, it twisted the line to the point, that's one half hitch, and I go a triple half hitch here. One, two, three, and you think, what a complicated deal. Well, it's not that complicated, but it's so, so, so efficient. All the people in saltwater, all the, the notable fishermen in saltwater use the Bimini Twist. Now, here's why I use the Bimini Twist. It's for the simple reason that now I can tie the line on this double line and it will stick out in front 100%. Now I can do this a couple ways. There's a couple of different knots to use, but I like to shorten it up. It's a double line now. And I can twist it. I sometimes I'll, and I'll go through an extra step. It just takes too much time to show you how I twist it. But for right now, I can make it short. That's a double line. I'm just going to make it short. I'm just going to make it just uh, two inches long. And I'm going to make a half hitch, just a simple half hitch right here. Okay, pull it tight. Make another little half hitch right there, little half hitch. It's, you'd say, what's a half hitch? Well, it's not much, but it's a little half hitch. Pull it apart. Okay. That's two little half hitches. Okay. Let's make a double half hitch. Let's go through once, twice, a double half hitch. Okay. Now, let's cut that off to show you what I got. That is really a super deal. Here is why it's so good. As soon as I cut this off, now, look at this deal. It's a hundred percent knot. If I if I go to break that right now, the line's going to break. So it's way 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 strong. It's a leader unparalleled but look at look how it sticks out straight it, it's just it just uh, just doesn't turn any which way now 
what I usually do is I'll go with my super glue again. I'll take a little super glue because I got little half hitches that sometimes slip. Okay, and I'll take my little super glue and I'll take my little super glue and go right over those little areas of the half half hitch place. Okay, there we are. I'll go right here at the end of the deal where I made a little half hitch there and stop that. Okay. And then and then I'll just pull it tight on the rod and it'll all just take a set when it dries thoroughly. It'll just take a set. I'll just put it back over here on the reel and reel it up tight and I'll take that'll take a set. Okay, so I've shown you the uh, the proper uh, knot to use. I've shown you the proper line. I talked about the putting the finish, the polyurethane finish on there. Uh, let's go up to the shop for a second. I just want to show you one more thing uh, on what I do up there uh, because I, I, I make lures. I actually make uh, uh, devil horses and stuff like that. And I have all the different components of, uh, of making lures. Okay, here's some of the things that I've done. I've come in with, uh, with these, uh, like I talked about, uh, both cedar and, and with uh, butternut, and I've carved out bodies that are lo like, like the devil's horse, similar, and I try them, and what I do, I even have the screw holes, see how the screw holes are set up for the same thing? What I'm using, this, this screw, for example, see, this is one of the big, long screws that I was saying, is so good it's so much stronger that screw is almost twice as long as the original screw that's in the devil's horse so it's twice as strong i mean it's just it'll it'll hold you could put big heavy braid on there for example and probably hold a tarpon if you had big enough hooks well that's not what i'm trying to do with this plug i'm not trying to catch big monster saltwater fish with it I, even though i do catch some snook with it uh and even some small tarpon I, it's primarily a bass lure for me so that's what i'm using it for uh, I come in at the same time and I even make little plugs like this one. Here's a little bitty miniature kind of top order that would just have one little hook on the front and on the back and one in the center and a couple little propellers. And that kind of works. I'm not just kind of playing around with different, different shapes and formats. And, and basically I'm trying to stay with the same shape as the, uh, <clears throat> as the original devil's horse. But I have to make it just a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker for the simple reason that this hardware and these screw eyes are a little bigger and a little heavier. So it takes a little bit more flotation on the lure. Okay, folks, so I've told you a few things that are really important about how, how to fish a devil's horse. And so uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, it's, it's a great lure for catching big fish, particularly in the, in the summer and the spawning season. But I use it all year round. It's just a great lure from Connecticut to California. I caught a whole bunch of fish up at Lake Champlain on it one time, both smallmouth and largemouth. I've taken it to Canada. I fished it down in Mexico. I mean, all kinds of places. It works all over the place. And while, while I'm at it, I sometimes make my own lures, and that's even more fun. So folks, I, I hope you enjoyed this little YouTube. I'm, I'm explaining how to effectively fish better this devil's horse and top water in general in the spawning season, catching those big bass. Hey, I hope I've taught you a thing or two, and uh, uh, I'm an old school teacher at heart. <laughs> okay, folks, hey, thanks for subscribing. We'll see you again soon, and hit that likes button. See you again soon.